Hi, thank you for inviting me, first of all, for the University of South Florida to talk about extended reality and building leadership. So I wanna welcome everybody to this presentation. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about what it is to be a successful leader and how extended reality is really helping make that happen. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how building leaders today and what we're doing currently and how we can make extended reality the way we build leaders for the future. I'm gonna talk about what XR is or extended reality, um, some recent findings, some preliminary research. And I'm also gonna talk about the XR classroom and what we've been doing for um, our School of Business students at Rasmussen University. And then I'm gonna share some preliminary outcomes and some final thoughts. So first I'm gonna to talk to you briefly <laughs> about leadership traits. Now I will tell you there's tons of leadership traits, behavior, skills, et cetera, on really what it is to be a successful leader. But I'm gonna talk about kind of the main ones. So communication is really key. We want our leaders to be communicators. We want them to be positive communicators, but we want them to be effective communicators. We also want them to be trustworthy. We want those leaders to exude trust. We wanna be able to trust in these leaders. We also want them to be open-minded. We want them to be able to think outside the box and come up with new and effective ways of doing things. And we need them to be decisive in their decision-making. But what all that boils down to, and in my opinion, the backbone of what re really is a successful leader is confidence and self-awareness. Uh, and in building confidence and self-awareness um, and esteem within individuals really helps make leaders of the future. So currently what we've been doing within building leaders is we can use training sessions or summits like we're doing here or with a work environment, some sort of training, leadership training. And then of course, within higher education, we do lectures. But again, how are we really making sure that we're building confidence within those individuals that we're speaking to or trying to train? So then we look at things like assessments. Within higher education, it's probably some sort of written assignment. Uh, within uh, the business environment, it could still be a written assignment. Maybe they have to write a paragraph of their experience. And then we can also look at things like tests and exams, which are great for covering things like the steps or the process or definitions and skills and leaders and being better leaders. But we really have to look at things like role playing and simulations because really getting at that confidence is, is practicing, right? We have to be able to build that confidence with individuals and we have to do that through soft skills. And you really can't do that through written assignments or tests and exams. So we wanna make sure we get people to practice what it would be like to be in a specific situation or make those tough decisions or communicate effectively to a group of individuals. And that's where role playing and simulations come into play. And really what I was talking about before was practice, practice, practice. I think it was Malcolm Gladwell who said we need 10,000 hours or something to be successful or an expert in that area. So this is where extended reality comes into place. And for those of you that might not know, XR really is just extending one's reality past you know, what they might know or what they might experience. And you can see things like virtual reality where you have the, the lady in the front, um, a right hand side here with a headset on and paddles and you can fully immerse that individual in some sort of scenario or situation. And then we have AR or augmented reality and augmented reality, you have to use some sort of smart phone or iPad or smart device to kind of interact with some sort of object. In this case, you can see it displayed as a magazine or a book cover. You take a picture of that and up comes more information or a video to kind of give you more information, but you're kind of extending or augmenting somebody's reality um, by using this particular device. I think the biggest one that I, I quote with my students is Pokemon Go. Uh, it was very popular at one point because everybody was running around with their smartphones and kind of capturing Pokemon, but um, they were using their cameras to do so. So that's really a good example there of the augmented reality. But within this extended reality, we have all kinds of different variations of that. I attended um, an event last year in the height of, of the pandemic, uh, which is the ILRN network. Um, it's an international conference of, for immersive learning experiences and network. And this, these are people from all over the world. 
And we get to meet in this virtual space. You get to create an avatar, you get to walk through this campus, this virtual campus, and you can do this either using Oculus glasses, you know, those VR type glasses, or you could do what I did where you could just, you know, toggle your keys on your keyboard. Um, but I would attend this session. This was like a week long session. You could uh, go up into the board, uh, like you were kind of on campus, if you will, and, and kind of attend specific events that you wanted to, to go to. Uh, or you could attend social events, which was kind of interesting as well. So you get to meet other people that are also experiencing the same situation with you. And you can have private conversations. You can have group conversations with other individuals. Uh, and on top of that, you could also go to a dance party. We had hotkeys where you could um, you know, learn specific dance moves of your avatar. Or if you had your virtual classes on, you could you know, do those movements yourself. If you didn't want to be that invasive, you could certainly still watch it on a YouTube um, channel, but you could attend specific workshops and you could see, you know, different avatars dressed differently and some of them would change their attire every day and be something, you know, a little different. Um, we had a costume party at Halloween, et cetera, but it, it kind of gives people this whole experience, um, especially with the pandemic and not being able to meet in person. You could also have, also have large auditorium type settings where you have your guest speaker and you can see the agenda and people are still going through social media, but it gives people that experience. And the experience is what people will remember, you know, more so than just writing a paper or, uh, you know, taking some sort of test or exam, they're gonna remember the experience. So some of the research is showing, you know, this Thing. And, and I will say with teaching things like professional communication and inviting students to the front of the class to talk, they don't want to do it. They're stressed. They're anxious. Um, their, their biometrics is off the chart because they don't, they don't know. They're not confident enough to stand in front of a, an audience and have a conversation or just talk with people. So having individuals go through these types of experiences, these simulations, giving presentations or working with individuals is giving them that safe space. And then they can build upon those other traits of leadership. You know, they can build upon communication and trustworthiness and being able to think outside the box and make better decisions because they're building on that, that building block of confidence. But some of this research is showing that it's reducing stress and anxiety because these students are practicing over and over again, you know, to a group of avatars, if you will. Um, it's also showing some biometric feedback in one research study that showed it is actually lowering the heart rate. So if we're reducing the stress, we're, we're lowering that, that flight response and kind of reducing that high that heightened experience where people are starting to freak out and, and run away. Um, but because the biggest thing is, is they're able to practice those skills in that safe space. So at Rasmussen University, we looked to building a classroom of the future and really looking at what extended reality, uh, whatever, concept that might be and look like, how that would really impact you know, student learning in this case. So I focused in on one of our courses, which is in our graduate studies program, and it focuses in leadership skills and emotional intelligence, two big things that we need to use to help build and foster uh, leadership within individuals. We ran the gamut through things of you know doing things multiple times three times is usually the key um, for people to kind of experience a new technology and really kind of fully understand it. So we did a pre-simulation at the very beginning. Um, so that way students could break, break the technology if they wanted to. They didn't, they didn't have to know anything. They didn't have to, to, to do anything. They weren't given anything more than the scenario. And they get to kind of figure out what it's like, what it's going to be like before they're actually graded on it. And then we did a post-simulation. Now the post-simulation, a lot of the students did a lot better, of course, at the post-simulation, and of course it was tied to their grade, but overall they said, I'm glad we did a pre-simulation because I knew what to expect, and now when I did the post-simulation, I felt a lot more confident in being able to handle the situation. Both simulations were given the same scenario, so nothing was changed. It's just that they were actually graded upon that simulation in the post or the secondary simulation. Now, I did have the opportunity for students to take it third time should they choose to do so. Most of the students just did the pre and the post. But what that allowed them to do is to experience the coursework, right, and the technology at the beginning with that pre-simulation. 
and then work through the skills and concepts around emotional intelligence and leadership skills, and then they get to practice and apply them through the post simulation. What was really interesting is that I had a lot of students say, I didn't know what to expect at the pre simulation again. I wasn't prepared, but once I got through the course, I felt a lot more confident with the post simulation. So what we did was we used a kind of a virtual reality um, variant uh, avatar, if you will, in this kind of like simulated situation. Uh, students only needed a camera, a microphone, and a computer to access it, but they would work through this situation where they were becoming, they were the leader or the manager, and they had to work with a subordinate, one of their employees, through some sort of behavioral issue that was going on with other coworkers. Uh, and so this is that conversation uh, that they were going back and forth. What was interesting is that a lot of the students at the beginning were very nervous. They thought that, oh, I couldn't do this. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't like being, you know, in some cases they were recorded um, or just, you know, kind of thinking they had the spotlight on them. But once they started kind of getting into it, they realized it was everything just became more of a real experience. Everything else fell away. And it was really just a conversation between two individuals be it a manager employee situation. Now the employee, if you will, uh, the avatar would, um, you know, already came in with a heightened kind of um, issue, a chip on their shoulder, if you will, because they knew they were being called in and reprimanded for some behavioral issues. So they came in, you know, very huffy, arms would cross, they would look away and every experience was going to be tailored to how that student or that learner, you know, worked with that avatar and I every single situation was different there was some that were shorter than others there were some that were longer some of them had really great conversations some even got reprimanded by the avatar because they weren't really paying attention and I've had I've seen where the student would look down and then the avatar called out called them out basically and said if you're not going to look at me while I'm talking to you then we can end this conversation now that snapped the person out of it and they began to kind of interact in, in a more realistic way with the avatar. <clears throat> so we've had 128 students successfully complete these simulations. Uh, we had 81% satisfaction or very satisfied with the experience. Um, we had 85% of them thought that it was very immersive and engaging. We had 91% of them said it was very effective and practical. And then we had 83% said it definitely enhanced their learning over any other type of um, technology that we would be using. And that they liked to the assimilation over papers. And that they got to actually use the skills that they, were, that they learned in the course. And that it was a great real life work experience. So finally, practical ap application, having students, having learners, uh, again, whether it's in a higher education setting or whether it's in a business setting, giving them the ability to use some sort of extended reality tool helps individuals practice. And we need those individuals to practice specific um, scenarios that we might give them. And of course, we could run all kinds of different scenarios uh, that they could go through. Um, they could have those hard, tough conversations that a lot of people now are like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to do the wrong thing. I don't want to come back with any legal or ethical impacts based on decisions that I made or things that I might have said that I shouldn't have said. Again, having the students go through these types of situations over and over again, even if they thought I didn't do so good, I wanted to say something a little bit different and see what outcome they might get. They have that ability to go through that and practice over and over again. And then, of course, diversity, equity, and inclusion. How cool is it that we now could literally put someone in someone else's shoes and have them experience things that they wouldn't normally experience in some sort of virtual um, type of experience, some fully immersive virtual experience? So these tools, and again, there's tons of different types of extended reality um, types of tools are ways that we can use to help build leaders for the future. Uh, here's my contact information if anybody would like to um, chat further. Um, I'm more than happy to speak with you. Thank you.